Thank you, Marty, and greetings from Kansas. I have to tell you that I'm Marty's lawyer. When he goes home at night and, you know, crosses the threshold of, of his house, I become his attorney in Kansas, trying to keep his rates uh, as low and affordable as possible while meeting all of these conflicting goals. So um, I didn't put together a PowerPoint, but I, I'm just going to visit for you with you for about 10 minutes. Um, NASUCA is the, uh, a membership organization of the statutory advocates in each state. Um, we're not a trade association. We're not companies. We are the people in each state that have the statutory responsibility of representing residential and small commercial consumers in the rate-making process and in the legislative process. So we live at ground zero uh, on all of this. It's, it's not abstract concepts to us. We're, we're in the middle of this uh, down at the ground level. Now, I have to tell you also that in Kansas, we're in about the 10th week of our legislative session. So I'm a little bit tired. Um, and I'm a little bit irritable, um, and there's, there, but it's been sort of interesting. You might have heard, if you've been following the news, that we have a little issue with the coal plant and the denial of a permit going on in Kansas. And I don't want to talk about that, but the interesting thing that that has led to is about two years of very intensive legislative debates about energy. And that can be good and can be bad, depends on how you look at it. But, but a couple of things that I've noticed, and, and I... I want to talk about, I think, three questions and three things that, that I think have stopped happening and that concern me greatly. And they've even stopped happening in Kansas, which concerns me even more greatly because Kansas is Republican, reliably conservative, fiscally conservative, not prone to flights of fancy by any stretch, and, and yet some questions have stopped being asked. And so I'm going to go through a couple of these questions quickly, and I want you to stop and think at your own state level and in your own experiences, are these questions being asked where you live? Maybe I'm wrong, and I've had this conversation with some of my other advocates, and they really think the same thing is happening. First of all, we've stopped talking about costs. Costs have suddenly become an abstract. Now, I'll tell you that in Kansas... At both the House and Senate level this year, we've passed renewable portfolio standard bills. And not once did anyone ask, how much is this going to cost? What does a 20% renewable portfolio standard, if you meet it with wind, which is the most economic, how much is that going to cost? How many wind turbines are we going to, are we going to add to the system? In, in Kansas, when they're not asking about the costs, that's kind of frightening. And so I ask you, here's pop quiz. Do you know what a 20% renewable portfolio standard by 2020 or 25, do you know how much that's going to cost in your state? Have you asked that question? How many of you have? Two? Three? Okay. It's billions of dollars, so you might want to know. I know that for our largest utility in Kansas, it's north of $2 billion in CapEx, and that's if you assume a $2 million megawatt the, um, um, price, uh, that's probably north of, of $200 million a year in annual revenue requirement impact to consumers. That's not inconsequential. And these bills went through and nobody asked that question. That's frightening. Carbon tax. I've spent most of the session kind of walking around our legislature and just asking my legislators as you read them in the hallways in Kansas in, in conversation and, and ask them if they know what a $25 per ton carbon tax or its equivalent in cap and trade, what that means to the Kansas economy. And I have yet, in 10 weeks, found one legislator that can tell me, do you know what it means in your state? I'll tell you, in Kansas, a $25 a ton carbon tax is north of a billion dollars a year. We have two and a half million people in Kansas. We have a million households. And at $25 a ton, which frankly is at the low end, if you listen to, if you hang around Washington here and you listen to the rhetoric, that's the low end of what they talk about when they talk about carbon regulation. I mean, that's just absolutely absurd. It's unthinkable that you would add that sort of cost to a consumer bill at Kansas. But what's more important is nobody's asking the question of how much that costs. That concerns me greatly. Second thing I think that we've stopped asking is what's the real priority here? It's what your mother always told you. 
You get what you need, not necessarily everything that you want. But nobody's asking, what do we really need? And if you listen to the rhetoric around the debate at the moment, we apparently need everything, top to bottom. Renewables, transmission, smart grids, carbon, you know, name it. There, there's, no, there's no restraint on the system. And fundamentally, this is different than, I think, any time in history. And we need to step back and ask, what do we need? Or ask a simple question that we used to ask in this country. I'm not sure we do anymore. So that if we have a dollar and we need to apply it to the system, where can we spend that dollar to get the maximum value for consumers at the end of the day? And we don't ask that question anymore. The third question that we've stopped asking, and this is a little more subtle, is once we've decided a priority, what's the least cost way of getting there? And it seems so ingrained in the entire utility process in this country, but you'd be amazed that that question is not being asked. Now, I'll give you a little example, and this is kind of fun. In Kansas, we have two merchant transmission companies in Kansas. One is ITC, one is uh, uh, a joint venture of our local utility and AEP. But merchant transmission companies fighting to build a 765 kV line that we don't need in Kansas which is fascinating enough in and of itself, but there's nowhere in our regulatory and legal process where we ask which one of these two companies that are building this thing that we don't need in Kansas can do it cheaper. And both of these companies have gone to FERC, and both of them have been approved for between 13 and 14 percent return on equities. Now, if you happen to live east of Kansas and you want wind power, in the 40 to 45 percent capacity factor range, and if you understand anything about the economics of wind power, you do, then this is a question you should be very concerned about because somebody's going to build a system in a very expensive way. But there's a more subtle question that I think is not being asked also, and that is, what is the least cost way to get this line built? So if you live in Maryland and you want to buy Kansas wind power, do you want us to pick between one of the two utilities that can build it for a 14% profit for shareholders? Or would you have us maybe put together a public purpose entity, float AAA graded bonds, float them in the market right now at 6% and build it that way? Which is better for your bottom line? But nobody's asking that question. And we should. And we must. Now why does that matter? Because at the end of the day, consumers want a couple of things. They want service, they want convenience, and they want it cheap. Let's not kid ourselves. I've been in the Consumer Advocates Office for 10 years in Kansas. I've been running it for seven, and I have yet to receive the phone call from a consumer that says, Dave, I really wish I could pay more at 4 o'clock in the afternoon so that I could do efficient things. I mean, you guys are kidding only people that sit around rooms like this and talk amongst yourself think that's what consumers want. I mean, they really don't. A couple of them do. There's a couple of people out there that are interested in Oracle's database or, or, or Google's little thing where they can see there's a couple. But come on, quite frankly, most of them don't. And that's the reality. Um, the other thing we've convinced consumers of, and this is a scary part, is that they want green energy, and green energy is free. And don't kid yourself. Go out there and talk to consumers. They think renewable energy is free. And they're going to be, I guess, not happy when they find out the real cost of renewable. Now, again, sometimes when I go talk, people say, you consumer advocates, you just, you just focus on costs. And there's really more to the world than that. And you know what? That's true. We get it. We know that. But... I posit you this. We do get the big picture. And most of the advocates are, are, are let's say, quite predisposed to leaning left and, and liking renewables. And I will tell you, if we don't fundamentally address the three questions that I put forth, cost, priority, building it cheap, there's going to be a huge consumer backlash at the end of the day. And we're not going to get to where we go or we, where we need to go as a country. We're not going to succeed if we have not prepared the consumers for what it takes 
and manage the process well around these three questions. We're going to fail. I get that, too. And so I leave you with those comments. And if you don't know, if you can't tell me what a 20% renewable portfolio standard costs in your state, and if you can't tell me what a $25 carbon tax costs at your utility, then I think I've made my case that we've got a lot more work to do. So thank you for your time.